In this podcast episode, Connor Beaton discusses attachment theory, a psychological and evolutionary theory concerning relationships between humans. The theory emphasizes the importance of developing a relationship with a primary caregiver during early childhood, as this forms the foundation for how individuals interact in relationships as adults. John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth are credited as the pioneers of attachment theory, with Bowlby starting the work in the 1950s and Ainsworth further developing the concepts of anxious and avoidant attachment styles. Attachment theory gained mainstream popularity through books like Attached, but Beaton notes that it has also been misused and oversimplified in modern discourse. He explains that attachment theory focuses on how individuals form relationships based on their early experiences with caregivers. The theory suggests that young children need to feel secure and safe in their relationships to develop healthy attachment styles. Beaton delves into the different attachment frameworks, highlighting the work of John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth as foundational to understanding attachment styles. He explains that attachment styles are often observed in children's responses to a caregiver leaving and returning, with behaviors indicating whether a child is secure, anxious, or avoidant in their attachment. Beaton discusses how attachment styles are formed during early childhood, emphasizing the importance of caregivers responding to a child's needs and creating a sense of safety and trust. He describes attachment as being built when individuals go through difficult times in relationships and come out the other side feeling secure and supported. The podcast delves into the phases of attachment development, heats with the first phase occurring from birth to 18 months, where infants learn to trust their environment and caregivers. The transition to the second phase, from 18 months to three years, involves the development of a sense of self and the need for approval and validation from caregivers. Beaton explains how disruptions in attachment during early childhood can lead to attachment issues in adulthood, such as commitment issues or difficulty trusting others. He highlights the impact of neglect or inconsistent caregiving on attachment formation, noting that individuals may develop insecure attachment styles as a result. The podcast also touches on the concept of co-regulation, where individuals learn to regulate their emotions and behaviors through interactions with others. Beaton emphasizes the role of secure attachments in promoting healthy social relationships and emotional well-being. Beaton highlights that anxious attachment can stem from various childhood experiences, such as inconsistent caregiving, overbearing parents, or trauma. These early experiences shape an individual's attachment style and influence their behavior in adult relationships. Anxious individuals may struggle with self-worth and self-validation, seeking external validation to feel secure and valued. To address anxious attachment, Beaton suggests several tactics. He emphasizes the importance of regulating oneself through practices like breathwork and meditation. By learning to soothe and calm their nervous system, anxious individuals can reduce feelings of anxiety and hypervigilance. Additionally, he recommends engaging in self-worth work to develop a sense of value and confidence independent of external validation. Practicing gratitude journaling with a focus on the importance and emotional impact of each entry can help anxious individuals build self-validation. Exposure therapy, such as saying no in relationships or engaging in activities that challenge anxious tendencies, can also be beneficial in overcoming anxious attachment. By confronting their fears and anxieties in a controlled setting, individuals can gradually shift towards a more secure attachment style. Beaton acknowledges that healing from anxious attachment is possible, but requires intentional work on both cognitive and somatic levels. He emphasizes the need to address shame and self-deprecation that often accompany anxious attachment, especially in men who may feel additional pressure to conform to traditional masculine ideals of stoicism and independence. By understanding the roots of shame and learning to motivate oneself without relying on self-criticism, individuals can work towards a healthier attachment style and improved relationships. Beaton highlights that avoidant individuals often struggle with expressing their needs and emotions in relationships. They may resort to controlling behaviors, manipulation, and criticism to try to get their needs met without directly communicating them. 
This can create a cycle of pushing people away when they get too close, leading to feelings of loneliness, frustration, and helplessness. He also discusses the challenges faced by avoidant individuals in seeking help, such as trusting therapists or counselors to support them through difficult times. Avoidant individuals may struggle to take ownership of their behaviors and often blame others for relationship issues. Beaton provides strategies for regulating oneself as an avoidant person. These include understanding the roots of avoidant attachment, prioritizing and expressing one's experiences and needs, shifting from blame to ownership, using shutdown as a bridge for repair in relationships, and practicing relational soothing or co-regulation with a partner. Beaton also addresses the concept of co-regulation, where partners synchronize their breathing and heart rates to create intimacy and trust. This practice helps individuals regulate their nervous systems and build stronger connections with their partners. Additionally, Beaton discusses the challenges faced by individuals with disorganized attachment, a combination of anxious and avoidant traits. He recommends seeking support from professionals to work through these complex attachment issues. When it comes to supporting an anxious partner, Beaton advises partners to validate their feelings, avoid overfunctioning, and create opportunities for connection. For avoidant partners, he suggests offering choices, inviting them to express themselves, and refraining from making demands or threats.